Hey guys, Simon Bryson here, and today we're gonna go ahead and review this book right here, Security and Analysis by David Dodd and also Benjamin Graham. By the way, Benjamin Graham has become, for example, the grandfather of investing. When you talk about investing, you can't mention anyone without mentioning Benjamin Graham and also David Dodd. But on top of these two people right here, you also have another investor, and that investor is Warren Buffett, which is basically a student of Benjamin Graham. And also David Dodd let Warren Buffett into Columbia University. Now, by the way, 1949, Warren was 19 years old and that's when he went ahead and he read this book right here, Security and Analysis. I think it was like the original edition, but this one right here is actually the sixth edition. Now, by the way, if you are interested in investing, all right, I recommend you read six books, okay? The first book is obviously not gonna be this one. This one is the uh, the Thick Boy. It's a very tough read to actually get through. However, I recommend you read this one first, Intelligent Investor, and then if you wanna move on to this one, go ahead and do it, Security Analysis. Then you also have Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits by Philip Fisher. By the way, this guy is the original, 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 and by the way, Charlie Munger, okay, is a big fan of Philip Fisher. Then you also have, for example, the little book about common sense investing by John C. Bogle. You also have, for example, One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. And on top of that also, A Random Walk Down Wall Street. Those six books right there are gonna help you out a ton when it comes to understanding investing. By the way, by the end of those books, guys, you'll decide, hey, is investing something that I actually wanna do? Because there's two ways, right? You can do active where you actually pick stocks. Or for example, you can go ahead and say, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and invest into index funds. And by the way, that is fine. That's what I'm actually doing right now. But picking stocks is very hard. Picking stocks is also a full-time job. So keep that in mind. But overall, guys, in this video, it's a review of this book, right? So I'll tell you one thing. I like this book a lot. If you want to read it, if you're serious about investing, read this book right here. Now, by the way, I did not read this actual book. I actually got, for example, the audiobook over at Audible for free, by the way. Link down below. When you sign up, you get two free books. Get it for free. And I actually read the book like that. However, it's just my first read. It was around 33 hours, okay? A very, very long time. But the idea is that I'm gonna have to go ahead and study this book again and again and again. Because basically, it's way too difficult to comprehend. It's like a textbook, basically. It's too difficult to get the whole thing in one picture, but they do have a lot of good examples in here and also give you a good fundamental way to actually get into investing. I highly, highly recommend it. Link down below to Audible if you wanna go ahead and get this book. However, I'll tell you three things that stood out the most to me in this book right here in this video. Now, if you guys are new here, I post videos every single day. And on top of that, I make a book review like once a week. I used to, but this book, guys, was 33 hours. So I couldn't do it in one week, okay? That's the idea here. But make sure you go ahead, guys, and also subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified. And on top of that, also destroy the like button. That way I know basically you like these videos when it comes to book reviews and so on. But again, those six books are gonna help you out a ton when it comes to investing. By the way, description will also have them so you don't have to remember what I said, so keep that in mind. But the very first thing that I got from this book, guys, was basically, you can fake being an investor, but you can't fake being a mechanic. Tell me, what are you talking about here? Well, in reality, today in the 21st century, in 2021, you know, investing has become basically like a game of chance, a lot like gambling, where people basically say, hey, I wanna make a video about investing, I'm gonna invest into this, into this, into this, and you ask them why, and they can't tell you why they did it. Instead, they say, hey, because everyone else is doing that. And that's just speculating, and it's also a game of chance, it's not really investing. Now, the idea is that if I go, for example, to my mechanic, and I bring my car, and this guy does not know anything about cars, can he fake being a mechanic? The answer is no, right? Because he won't be able to fix the car because basically a car is a very complex thing to actually fix. The same thing goes when it comes to investing and analyzing companies. They're very complex to actually understand. Well, not too complex, but complex enough that the average person cannot do it without basically getting some good education on it. Now, the idea is that anyone can go on Robinhood 
can go on the Cash App, can go on M1 Finance, can go on any platform out there and invest into whatever they want to invest into. Now, does that mean they're an investor? The answer is no. Does it mean that your barber giving you a tip is an investor? The answer is no. Does it mean anyone on YouTube with a video is there an investor? The answer is also no. Right. And by the way, it's very easy to see who a real investor is. Just ask them this one question. What has been your track record for the past five to 10 years? And also, what has been your biggest loss and why? And if they say, for example, oh, the market wasn't right or this or that. Right. It's all usually speculation. OK. And by the way, my portfolio right now is doing perfectly fine. All right, when it comes to investment investing, I'm up around 20 to 30%. And when it comes, for example, to picking stocks, I'm up around 128%, right? Because I know what I'm doing. But I also know for a fact that basically, investing is a full-time job. And do I want to do that? Right now, I don't. I'm being honest, okay? So I'd rather, for example, invest into index funds and do it for a moment and keep studying and studying and studying and becoming, for example, a better investor. Again, Warren really started at age 19. Right. That's when he actually read this book. That's when he actually really started to comprehend everything about investing. But for me, I'm 24. I have a quarter of a million dollars in index funds. I'll be just fine. But I'll get started on this also by studying and doing paper trades and so on. Well, not trading back and forth, but basically value investing to comprehend everything. So overall, my point is this with number one here is that although it's easy to fool people, you can't fool yourself. So unless you're going to go ahead and take on, you know, invest as a full-time job, the answer is most likely all you want to do is just go ahead and do index fund investing, okay? Peter Lynch, he was going to work part-time at the Magellan Fund, and he said no. And by the way, because basically investing is a full-time job. You can't do it part-time. You have to be in there. Warren Buffett, I think Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday is in that office <laughs> for eight hours just reading statements and reading SEC documents, right? That's all he does, okay? He's trying to find investments. That's all it is. It's a very tough job to do. And by the way, Warren Buffett is so good with dates. So good. I have to have like a, a photographic memory or something like that. He's very good with numbers also. And by the way, you need to know accounting when it comes to this stuff also. Now, number two, guys, okay, is basically finding good investments is like looking for diamonds in a river. Tommy, what do you mean here? It means, for example, you know, you can't be good at everything, you know, and it's very tough to find, for example, a few good companies in a massive market. What do I mean, right? You know, for example, like how in basketball, you have like maybe like three people you remember, like Kobe Bryant, you have LeBron, and you also have, for example, Jordan. There's like three main people out there, but there are a lot of good players out there, but not everyone makes it. The same thing with investing. A lot of good companies out there, but not everyone's gonna make it for the long term. So finding those really, 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 really good companies, right, is going to be very difficult. And also buying them at a very good fair price or a discount is also gonna be very difficult. That's what I mean. It is a very tough game to go ahead and find good companies. And by the way, the key is not volume. I'm going to buy all these stocks right here. That's not the key because basically you might just buy a bunch of trash and your money is going to be wasted. The key is not saying, hey, I'm going to follow the crowd. Everyone right now is doing Tesla or Apple or cryptocurrency. So I'm going to go ahead and do that also. The answer is following the crowd is also not the answer. Why? By the way, I'm not saying be a contrarian, right? Sometimes the crowd is right. But you as an investor are supposed to know what you're investing into based on what you actually understand and what you actually know. Does that make sense? It means basically you're not waiting to hear what I'm doing to do what you're doing. You know exactly what to do based on what your actual knowledge actually is. You know exactly how to do what you got to do. You're a full blown mechanic. Okay. You don't need instructions. You know exactly how this car actually works. And by the way, when it comes to the market, guys, we have to understand that basically you have, for example, different industries. You have, for example, the banking industry, the tech industry, the car industry, uh, the finance industry, like whatever it is, right? There's a lot of industries out there. But the one thing is basically you cannot become an expert on all these industries. What you have to do is basically go ahead and pick a niche and become a full-blown expert around that and look through all those companies until you find one that actually meets your criteria. Your criteria cannot be bent, okay? That's the idea. But you need to know exactly how to follow through, how to actually understand a business, and how to actually analyze it. That's the idea. It's like, for example, 
if I want to buy your company, do I care what you want for it? No. I care basically what the real value of that company is. I think Warren says, price is what you pay, value is what you get, right? That's, that's the idea with that. Now, number three, and lastly here, guys, investing is mostly common sense, right? If I told you, I'm gonna sell you a business for more than it's worth, would you buy it? The answer is probably gonna be no, it's overpriced, right? The same thing happens in the stock market. People buy companies, too expensive, but they hope that based in the future, it might keep going up and up and up and up. And I call that speculation. On top of that, should you follow people downhill? Again, you don't wanna be contrarian, but you don't wanna just follow people blindly. You gotta understand investing as a whole for yourself and what you wanna do is basically go ahead and do stock picking, okay? I don't go on YouTube to say, hey, what stock am I going to invest into according to this creator today? By the way, no offense here, okay? That's good information. But the idea is that if you don't know why you're doing it, then you're probably doing the wrong thing. You gotta understand exactly why things work the way they work. On top of that, should you ask for advice when investing? Yes, it's okay to have, for example, a group of people to ask for advice when it comes to investing, but it's not good or common sense to say, hey, I can only invest based on information that I get from other people. That's way too dependable. You don't know what you're doing. You gotta go out there and find out exactly what you're doing. This book right here will teach you it. Or for example, expose that you don't actually wanna do it, because it's a lot of work, by the way. And it's not meant for everyone, and that's fine. But you can go ahead and invest, for example, into index fund and get the average and still become very wealthy. Do you need, for example, $99.8 billion? The answer is no. <laughs> Warren Buffett does nothing with that money, by the way. He just got a massive capital, and he's also just gonna give it all away. So keep that in mind. On top of that, guys, okay, should you buy a dying business? You know, sometimes people say, hey, AMC <laughs> or GameStop, right? Well, this business right here, and by the way, they're buying this business not because, oh my gosh, the value here, because basically they're hoping to go ahead and start like a whole squeeze again, right? A short squeeze. And is this good? Is this whatever? The answer is no. It's also speculation. Be very careful with these games, okay? When you lose money, maybe 10000 maybe maybe $100, maybe a dollar, the answer is that's money you work for. That's your time going down the drain. So you better understand exactly what you're investing into before you actually go ahead and do it. Should you buy a business with stupid managers? Again, buying a business is not just, for example, the product or, or the whole like corporation, but it's also, for example, the management. If the management sucks and they're dumb, stupid, right? Sometimes you get that, right? The answer is, should you buy? The answer is no. That's why you also have to study the management whenever it comes to going ahead and buying a company. And lastly, should you buy a company, right, that does not know how to reinvest its capital into profitable things? The answer is also no. By the way, if a company does not know how to reinvest, the answer is give out its stock dividends, right? Give money back to its shareholders. However, some companies, they go ahead and grab the money and put it in investments and basically get negative cash flow because basically they don't know what the heck they're doing from their investment activities. So overall, guys, Okay, investing is definitely not common sense, but there are a lot of common sense things to actually understand when it comes to investing. So I recommend this book, obviously. I recommend this book right here, obviously also. And I also recommend this book right here. Also, Random Walk Down Wall Street. And on top of that also, the little book about common sense investing by John C. Bull, which by the way, is one of my favorite books ever. So overall guys, for this book review video, the idea is that yes, I like this book a lot. But yes, this video is a textbook. So in reality, you gotta keep reading it and reading it and re not reading it, okay? That's the wrong word here. You gotta keep studying it. You study this book, you practice what you learn, and you put it into action. But again, investing is a full-time job and it's also not for everyone and that's also fine. But it's not okay to lie to yourself and be like, hey, I'm an investor, but you're just speculating. Be honest with yourself and don't put your money at risk. Guys, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. And by the way, I read the audiobook. I regret that. I should have gone ahead and actually read the physical book and I will do that now because again, audiobooks sometimes you don't get the whole picture. There's a lot more in this book that I have not gotten yet. And that's why I'm gonna give it a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth study. That's the idea. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you wanna call me and talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I have a third channel call. Ask me, Bryce, I wanna take your calls one-on-one. -on -one. They're free calls, by the way. Link down below. Schedule a call and I'll call you. On top of that, I also have another channel where I basically upload every single day called Time Bryson Show, where I also react to things, okay? So I post videos three times a day, every day, 
consistently, okay? I'll see you guys next time. If you want to DM me, well, join me on Instagram at Tiny Bryson. And before I go, guys, as always, thank you guys. Really appreciate it, and peace.